Greetings from Snake Mountain Boatworks on Friday, December 11th. I've continued working on the uh, 53 Shepherd Sportsman. Uh, as you can see, I've made a first pass stripping the port side from stem to stern. She's pretty clean, but I think you'll also see as I walk along that uh, the wood continues to hold stain residue and I will deal with that uh, in, a, in a manner that's really not much fun. Uh, basically it involves taking the circa 1850, wetting an area that is oh approximately two feet by uh, three feet, in other words from, from chine to uh, gunnel about two feet wide and then taking the pot scrubber and scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing till we achieve oh the look right in right in here in other words bare mahogany with no residual stain whatsoever i finished the port side as you can see the some joy remains on the starboard side i have started working this morning uh, at the transom and this afternoon my goal is to complete the stripping of the starboard side all the way to the to the stem and you'll notice that we have released the splash rails we do so on virtually every boat we work on and in this case the reasons are clear first of all the fasteners are stainless steel and I'm in total agreement with Don Dannenberg and uh, metallurgists with whom I've uh, conferred that you simply do not want to use stainless steel fasteners anywhere near or below the waterline. Secondly, we just wanted to see what is behind the splash rails. Has the wood begun rotting? Uh, are there issues with wood being uh, water being able to get behind the splash rails well you'll see that the good news in this case is that the the splash rails are really in excellent condition the not so good news is that as with other things we've discovered on this boat uh, a prior uh, uh, let's say i'll call him or her a restorer uh, lightly uh, sort of gobbed on some kind of compound uh, into this surface, but in no, nowhere along the entire length, except maybe right here, if got close, was there actually a bead of the bedding compound that had oozed out and then was cleaned off. Uh, this surface is concave. It's meant to be loaded up with bedding compound and as the fasteners draw the, the rail into the, into the uh, top side, it meant to uh, force excess bedding compound out of the joint between each splash rail and uh, the top side board plank against which it is being fastened. So we were happy to discover though that whatever this stuff is uh, it's not the equal uh, uh, of 18, circa 1850 stripper uh, it took me about four passes to completely clean the surface of any of that residual uh, compound the good news is uh, it doesn't appear that much water uh, invaded the space behind the, the uh, splash rails. Uh, there was quite a bit of varnish on both the top and bottom joint and I think that served uh, as a moisture barrier. But when we put them back in, uh, trust, trust me, a phrase my wife hates to hear me say. She said, as soon as you say it, nobody will believe you. Uh, but trust me, when we put them back in, goop will ooze out of the seams. So. I've got about half the starboard side 
and most of the transom left to do. Uh, this boat is really pretty heavy, so this was RJ's idea to support the aft end of the boat with one of our pallet jacks uh, and uh, a piece of blue board. I have to say it's, it's wonderful to have this stability back here. And of course with the pallet jack, I can raise this boat as high as I want it to be so I'm not working around my knees. So that's where we are as this week ends. We'll be back to you soon. Thank you so much from Snake Mountain Boatworks. Bye bye for now.